So we went through a bit of messy algebra, but that's okay. I hope, if, even if you haven't gotten this far, you're starting to recognize something, right? By the time you had to start completing the square, you're like, oh, I've seen this kind of problem before. It just came out later, <coughs> right? Because you often would have gotten the same numbers here, things would divide through, okay? What does this look like? Like a squash circle? Yeah, like this kind of thing, right? This is what I'm familiar with. If, for example, if I took away the four and the three, just take away those coefficients for a second, right? What would that give you? Um, you've got a circle with a particular center and a particular radius, yes? But because you have four and a three, right? What's happening is you're squeezing and you're squashing, but you're doing the horizontal and the vertical by different amounts. In other words, what you get is something in this particular one. I think you'll get something kind of like this. Well, I'm exaggerating a little bit. In other words, the shape you have well, you could either call it an oval, or it could be technical and call it an ellipse, okay? Now, this is, this is an ellipse, this is an ellipse. In fact, this ellipse is this ellipse. Remember those whispering galleries we were looking at just now? This arch up here is an arc in an ellipse, right? That's how it pulls off this trick. It's because it borrows it from the circle, except it stretches it out and does something a little bit different. You remember those people, they had to stand, like where they were standing was not like, it wasn't like at particular points like this. They could stand sort of within, you remember the diagram of how it's animated, okay? So, let's get a picture of this, okay? Now, I need a bit more space, and you may need to get a new page for yourself. <coughs> so, sir, so is an ellipse more effective than if that was a semi-circle? Like the if, if it were a semicircle, you'd have to be sort of standing up in the air to make oh. it. Oh. And also, you wouldn't be able to fit as many people in it, and you would, you'd have to make it too tall. Like architecturally, because it's underground. Yeah. Okay. okay. Let's do this. Okay. What I'd like you to do for me now is you remember you've gotten two equations of two locuses. Lock guy, whatever they call it. Okay. I would like you to very roughly sketch them out for you. They don't have to be beautiful. Okay. Um, you can see you're going to have uh, this point here, like the center of the lips is going to be higher. I'm going to give you a rough idea of what it looks like. But you'll need two sets of axes. Okay. So we're going to draw the parabola, then we're going to draw the ellipse. It doesn't need to be super detailed. I only want to make a really simple observation off of this. In fact, I don't even want you to bother labeling the equations of the points or anything like that. This is all you need to see. Okay. Now remember, the way we constructed this parabola was we gave it a locus definition, right? We started with the focus and the directrix, and then we said, look, if you compare some distances here, Right? Like this distance, this distance, or whatever, those should be the same. Okay? Then we change the ratio of those two distances. Right? We said instead of making them the same, instead of making the ratio one to one, we said, well, let's make the ratio a half. So one of those things is double the other one. Okay? This is what happens. This is the kind of shape that emerges. Um, I've got this vertical shift happening, which is why I'm kind of off center. Okay? Now, though, I've got a completely different shape. Do you notice, I started with the same two geometric features. I started with the same focus and the same directrix, right? So these two geometric features belong on this shape as well. They're roughly here and here, okay? But you'll notice all ellipses, right? Just like all circles. All ellipses have this beautiful symmetry. Right? Um, they have two particular axes of symmetry, and they have an axis of symmetry that relates to these two features, right? Because you've got the directrix, for instance, on this side, right? But if this shape is symmetrical, if I look at it like this and sort of do a mirror, do you see that if there's a directrix on this side, 
there's also a directrix on the other side that is equally valid, right? It's like, what makes this the directrix more than this? And the answer is nothing. If, if I say, there's that directrix for this focus, there's going to be a second directrix, and there's also going to be a second focus, right? So because of the symmetry of the ellipse, as opposed to the symmetry of the parabola, you've only got one axis of symmetry here, but I have two here, right? If I cut right down the middle, I get not one, but two, and we call them foci. That's a bit awkward, but that's okay. And directrix is a much clear, clear, uh, cooler plural. These are called <laughs> directrices. Directrices, okay? So, what have we just established so far? Okay, We can now see through just a slight little modification, and we're not all the way there yet, this is just the beginning. Okay? We can now see how this guy, the ellipse, or at least half of an ellipse, right? and this guy, the parabola, they are deeply connected algebraically, even though like the equations are quite different. Okay? Now, by the way, remember I started off by showing this, right? You know these two people? They're not just standing anywhere. They're not just standing at two random points. In fact, they have to be standing at the foci, which is the beautiful thing about the Whispering Gallery. You remember, they were standing there in the middle recording that, like they were just talking to the video, the camera and so on, right? And they weren't getting that whispering effect. That's because if you are anywhere else in here, sound just does its thing and it just goes everywhere and it scrambles, right? But if you stand at those particular spots, you get this exact effect. Which is another thing that's a bit different from the circle. Right. Okay. So now, now. Like, it's like way bigger. Correct. Well, that's right. So you can see the arc, it actually doesn't, like the shape of the arc, you can go back and look at the video again, and you can actually see the plans for it. You go to, go to Wikipedia and look up Whispering Gallery, right? And you will see there are many different varieties, and they have to do some really funky maths to get the positions right. Because uh, I believe they're actually standing at a pillar. And then the, the arch goes over, over the middle. Okay, now, um, just give me a moment to get some space. While I do this, I'm going to give out these. Take one over. Okay, now uh, the, the photocopy I'm giving you, and I probably will not do this for the future. This is the new edition of the small red Fitzpatrick that you already have. Um, some of you might have this book. If I recall, <coughs> the exercise on conics is not actually very different. Some of the chapters, particularly on integration, which is a later topic, they're like, is that a spin? They are completely different versus um, from this to the old edition. So that's why sometimes I will refer to this one. You may recognize the typesetting. This is where we've got the complex numbers exercises from. I actually am going to assign some questions from the other textbook, but I left it on my desk. So I'll have to get that. Alright, now, don't worry, it's a triple period, I'll have time to figure out. <laughs> now, now, here's where my challenge now becomes, okay? What we did was, we started with, in the first place, and I rubbed off all the way now because we've got so much space. We started with a focus and then a directrix, and then we moved forward, and we got the equation of the parabola, and we got the equation of this ellipse. If you can start with the focus and directrix, and then move forward into the equation, right? logic would imply that I can also go in the reverse direction. If what I am handed is the equation of such a shape, if you know, for example, and we, we looked at this before, if you know the equation of Plabba, we're quite well versed in working out what is the equation of, sorry, yeah, what's the equation of the directrix and the focus that belong with this guy, 
right? I want you to think for a moment and to go back to your working or what you just did to go in this direction. If I handed this to you, right? Could you try and work out, well, how do I reverse engineer this? How do I go back to the focus and the geometries? <coughs> and also, note that you will find two of each. You will find two foci and you'll find two directrices. Okay. I want you to look carefully at the algebra that took you from these two features to this equation. Right? I provided a simpler one for you so that it's not like all shifted around and the numbers are a bit disgusting. So this comes out quite nicely. I wonder if you can work out where did it come from. Okay? I'm looking for the two foci and the two directrices. Now really if you find one of each, you'll be able to find the others and I'll show you in a 